and welcome this is Baller Scuba with Let's Recap Xenosaga Episode 1. We are going to be viewing the summary of Xenosaga Episode 1 that is present in Xenosaga Episode 3. It is presented in screenshot format and it does skip quite a bit of the first game, but let's go ahead and execute so that we can read it. In 20 XDX AD, a mysterious plate-like object was found at an archaeological dig around Lake Turkana, located in northern Kenya. The object, named Zohar, was responsible for the disappearance of lost Jerusalem, forcing mankind to escape into outer space. 4,000 years later, TC 4767, the 117th Marine Division of the Galaxy Federation Army, with the space cruiser Woglinde as its flagship, was on a mission to investigate the disappearance of planet Ariadne. The anti-gnosis android Cosmos was deployed on the Woglinde in case of an attack by the mysterious enemy Gnosis. Shion Uzuki, the chief of Vector's first R&D division and development members were also on board for Cosmos's startup experiments. Cosmos's startup experiment was conducted repeatedly while the fleet continued their investigation, but the experiments were not going smoothly and the unit was not ready for combat. Though frustrated with the failed experiments, Xi'an also felt resistance to Cosmos, left to her by her dead lover Kevin, waking up as a weapon. Assistant Chief Alan Ridgely, who was in love with Xi'an, could only watch her silently. While investigating the area where the disappearance occurred, the Woglinde found an object thought to be the Zohar and stored it. Finished with the investigation, the fleet left the area. With the mission safely accomplished, the crew breathed a sigh of relief. Xion was attacked by the Gnosis that had infiltrated the ship. As she lost consciousness, she saw an image of a mysterious girl that called herself Nephilim. Xion was helpless and knew she would die, but Cosmos self-activated and saved her. Xion rendezvoused with Alan and Virgil after being saved by Cosmos and attempted to escape from the Woglinde. Cosmos defeated the numerous Gnosis that attacked them, but during the battle, Cosmos shot and killed Captain Virgil, along with the Gnosis, in order to save Xion. Cosmos felt no remorse for killing Virgil and told Xion that she is a weapon. Xion was appalled at her actions. Xion was unable to accept what Cosmos declared and escaped from the Woglinde with Alan in the escape pod. Xion was rescued by a space cargo vessel, the Elsa, and met a boy named Chaos, who possessed strange powers. In front of Xion, Chaos disintegrated a Gnosis just by touching it. She was surprised by his power, while Chaos silently smiled at her. The captain of the ship, Matthews, accepted Cosmos' high-handed request and headed for Second Milsha with Xion and Alan. Meanwhile, the cyborg Ziggy was on a lone mission on the asteroid Pleroma by the request of the Galaxy Federation's contact subcommittee to retrieve the kidnapped 100 series prototype realian Momo from the UTIC organization. Momo was targeted by the UTIC commander Margulis due to the secret document known as the Y data that was embedded into her subconscious domain by Joachim Mizrahi. Ziggy was able to safely rescue her and escape Pleroma with a small vessel, but was pursued. While on their way to Second Milsha, the Elsa detected Ziggy and Momo, who were under attack. They destroyed the UTIC organization's autotech and saved them. After conferring with Yuli Mizrahi, Ziggy and Momo stayed on board the Elsa to go to Second Milsha. 
Later, the Elsa rendezvoused with the heavily armed ship, the Durandal, that was investigating the UTIC organization. She and the others met a boy named Junior, who was a member of the board of directors of the special foundation known as the Kukai Foundation. Junior, with ties to the second Milsha government, understood the situation surrounding Momo and invited them to stay at the Kukai Foundation. They got a little respite at the colony owned by the Kukai Foundation, courtesy of the representative director Guinan Kukai. Margulis, who had been watching them, created a trap for the Foundation in order to obtain the Y data that lay dormant in Momo. By Margulis's scheme, the Foundation was surrounded by a Federation fleet on grounds of treason against the Federation. They were arrested and detained by the army, but they proved their innocence with the battle data recorded in Cosmos. They were safely released from the army, but Margulis had already ordered possession of Momo. The man in charge, Albedo Piazzola, was a URTV, a bioweapon created during the Milshin conflict 15 years ago, and a man obsessed with Junior another URTV like him. Albedo accepted Margulis's request and powered the Song of Nephilim, an invention of madness by Joachim Mizrahi in Milshin space. Second, Milsha and the Kukai Foundation were in danger from the swarm of Gnosis that appeared in Milsha space from the Song. Momo was kidnapped by Albedo and taken to the Song of Nephilim, when she stayed behind to treat the injured. Junior was enraged when he found out that Momo had been taken. She unused Cosmos's phase cannon to force the Song of Nephilim to appear in real space. They successfully entered it and saved Momo while cornering Albedo. However, Albedo managed to escape when a mysterious cloaked individual known as Testament suddenly appeared before them. Albedo had gone mad and brought the massive factory Proto Merkaba into existence using the Y data fragments he acquired from Momo. Albedo tried to destroy Second Milsha with Proto Merkaba, which was powerful enough to take on the Gnosis. Xion and the others attempted to destroy Proto Merkaba from the inside to stop its attack. They successfully destroyed the main reactor at its center, which had fused with the Gnosis. But after losing its power source, Proto Merkaba started to slowly fall to Second Milsha. Albedo laughed at Junior and left. Cosmos attempted to dismantle Proto Merkaba from the inside to stop it from devastating Second Milsha. She was successfully able to dismantle it and Proto Merkaba disintegrate into numerous fragments. However, unable to get out of Second Milsha's gravitational field, the Elsa started to fall out of control as well. The Elsa was engulfed in the high temperature of the atmospheric plasma. In order to save the Elsa, Cosmos exited the vessel to, dis to deploy her protective shield around the ship. Xion tried to stop her, but communication with her was cut off. Although her body was burned by the frictional heat, Cosmos deployed the shield. As if responding to her powers, Chaos's fists started to glow. The two powers surrounded the Elsa as white wings. The Elsa emerged in the sunrise, and from the bridge, she saw Cosmos standing on the ship. And that's the summary of Xenosaga Episode 1. Uh, like I said, it skipped quite a bit. It also kind of gave us information at times that we didn't have that information, but it's a quick recap. And that is what we are here to do. So with that done, that is going to do it for this part of Let's Recap Xenosaga Episode 1. I have been Baller Scoob. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.